Hi, I'm Allie. I'm a sophomore from Bellevue West, and I am nothing but pond scum. <laughs> when I was a little girl, my dad used to take me hiking in the woods near our house. We'd pack a bag full of the necessities for a five-year-old, you know, like fruit snacks and Scooby-Doo crackers and <laughs> juice pouches, and at that time, the world just seemed so big. Trees cut the clouds into perfect pastry puffs in the sky, and climbing a hill was comparable to scaling Everest. <laughs> By far, my favorite moments were the ones spent near the pond. I loved the smell of the decomposing leaves on the water's edge and the sound my boots made in the mud. You know, that like squishy one that gets stuck in your chest with your heart. I always believed that the lives of the pond would equate to something bigger, something greater than the pond itself. In the pond, I saw my reflection and knew that there would always be more on the bottom. When I look in the mirror, I see the murky waters of my mind behind my pond scum colored eyes and wonder what else there could be. I wonder if there's an entire ecosystem living in my mind as I traipse through the world. Minnows swim through my stream of consciousness and frogs hop along the temporal load of, of my brain. And sometimes I wonder if I lay still enough, if I can hear their movements, or if I'm quiet enough, if I can hear the mosquitoes buzzing around my skull. My dad used to make up stories and little games to teach me how nature worked, things like how the seasons change and where the leaves go when they fall and why winter was so much colder than summer. I've learned that in the winter, when nature lays to rest, my mind freezes over and the park rangers, I mean the doctors, tell me that seasonal depression is common. They tell me there's fluctuations in melatonin and the inside of my brain doesn't work properly, but below my frozen gaze sits an entire world awaiting the spring. And while the fish have slowed and the frogs have begun to hibernate, I fester on the need to make a change. Behind my eyes and the squishy icky mick of my emotions, I see a mind teeming with life. My words graze the bottom of the ice, not to create ripples, but to encourage typhoons. My voice bounces not to be heard, but to be listened to. The pond inside my head is a deep and dark one. Few have been permitted to traverse. I am the lady of the pond. I have sunk boats and swallowed swimmers whole. My ideas sprout from the bottom and reach for the sky despite the murky water. It is as soft and quiet as snowfall, but step in and you may never leave. Fish the size of prehistoric monsters swim, gobbling at the toes of those who dare to tread its waters. A graveyard spans the soft mud under the water, filled with the memories of those who couldn't keep up with the waves leaving my mouth. As a child, backpacking across two and a half miles of forest, was like tra traversing the Alaskan wilderness. Swimming in a pond the size of your backyard feels like crossing the ocean. Being in my head feels a lot like drowning. But I know what happens below the surface. Yeah.